Y'all, it's your girl Monet, and you're watching The Exchange Rate, a show that'll put a smile on your face worth more than the gym membership I just got, but won't renew after January 2nd. <laughs> oh, it's January 9th, whatever. <laughs> so, once again, we find ourselves at the beginning of a brand new year. And as per usual, the hashtag New Year, New Me is trending. But between rumors of World War III, cats, and JLo's Golden Gold dress, I have my own questions. <laughs> new Year, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I mean, seriously, every time I put the news on, I feel like I'm watching some weird crossover of Scandal meets Stranger Things 4. In this week's episode, a demigorgon somehow becomes president, has us all trapped in the right side up, and is sending the world to an impending doom by way of quid pro collusion. <laughs> Which, when you think about it, it really isn't too far from my fucking reality, you know what I mean? Uh, Tyler Perry couldn't even fucking make that shit up. But, so help me God, if I see another Baby Yoda gif. <laughs> Which, honestly, I'm not mad at that it's Yoda. I'm mad that it's a fucking baby. In 2020, we're done with babies, okay? I mean, Yoda, a regular Yoda I can handle. A wise old ninja that drools a little bit, speaks in puzzles, and really knows how to work a big lightsaber. Get it, bitch. <laughs> yes, thank you for the clap. Thank you for the clap. Thank you. The amount of edibles I took for that joke. Anyway, we've got a great show for you guys this week. The, the incredible Noah Galvin is here. <laughs> But first, let's get into the gig. Hit it! You guys like the outfit? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Uh. Did you like that snapshot, sir? He's like, no. All right. <laughs> oh my God, well, here we are, a brand new year, head the exchange rate. Woo! Um, online, people are like, it's season two. I'm like, it's not really season two. We just took the, the winters off, girl. You know, we took the rest of December off and the beginning of, of, of the new year, and now we're back. And I'm very excited because this show is so near and dear to me. You guys coming out every week is so fun, and we talk shit, we play with celebrities, and we have a good time. Amen? Amen! <laughs> and, of course, we talk about Beyonce. Now, <laughs> how many of y'all watched the Golden Globes this year? <laughs> Okay. How many of y'all have cable to watch the Golden Globes? <laughs> oh, but you ain't watching. You shady. Anyway, so Miss Beyonce. Now, before we even talk about her tea, let's talk about this dress. Do we like this outfit? Woo! Okay, let me wipe the screen off. You probably can't see good. <laughs> you like this outfit? Yes. Girl, someone took a black tube sock and hot glued two loofahs on it, all right? <laughs> They sprinkled some glitter on it and called it a look. I, now, I worship by the Church of Beyonce. I fucking love Beyonce, but this is not a hit to me. I, I, I'm not obsessed with it. But that's not the story. The story is that Beyonce, in all of her B-ness, showed up late to the Golden Globes. She missed the red carpet. She did no press. And her and Jay-Z brought their own champagne to the function. <laughs> this is the security guard holding their two bottles of champagne right there. <laughs> So like, ain't nobody touching Beyonce motherfucking liquor, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is their security guard, this is Beyonce and Jay-Z. Look at this room full of white people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Beyonce and Jay-Z just all up, posting up in the back, like living in their royal greatness. So Beyonce, she was there because she was nominated for Best Original Song um, in The Lion King. I know the song Spirit. Like, good luck in my hair. <laughs> That's not it, but we can't sing it because of rights, you know what I'm saying? So she was nominated for Spirit. She didn't win, but the ultimate shade is that she was sitting next to um, Joaquin Phoenix, who, uh, uh, a joker, and he won the award. So, Joaquin, did we like Joker, by the way? I loved it. I thought it was a great film. It was so good. The ending is so great. But the gag was Joaquin Phoenix won. They, sit, they sat Beyonce next to him, and the entire room erupts in a standing ovation like, Joaquin, woo, woo, woo. Cut to Beyonce. <laughs> Just giving all the side eye, all the shade, so you know this became a meme around the world. But I'm kind of on Beyonce's side. I'm so sick of us doing standing ovations for everything. Everything does not deserve a fucking standing ovation. If you want to, sure. But I feel like we, like, I, I've seen a few musicals this year. Some great, some not. And at the end, the entire room always gets up and it's, I'm like, 
half y'all in here were falling asleep by the second act. Why are we all standing up and clapping? So, uh, no shade. I'm, I'm not going to say no name, because I, I might audition later, and I, won't, I, I might want to roll. But, you know, everything doesn't deserve a standing ovation. So I'm on Team Beyonce. She, she, you know, she, she, she's giving a little subtle little one of these, a little, a little Tiger Woods golf clap. She's giving a little recognition, but she didn't feel that she needed to stand. Do y'all think that Beyonce is shady for not standing? No. No, right? Do you, are, are you guys kind of standing? Are y'all, are y'all, if you go to a bad musical, make some noise if you would clap even though, make some noise if you would give a standing ovation even if you didn't love it because of social pressure. You, you can clap, sir, right now. Right? You, can clap. <laughs> you know, give yourself a standing ovation. I'm proud of you. Yes, 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 yes. You see, you didn't deserve it, but we did it for you anyway, all right? So I think that Beyonce is fine. It's not shady. She's just living her life, and all hail Queen B. Amen, girl? Yeah. Oh, this drink, Kate, this drink is nice and strong today. Mm-hmm. Um... Um, and other celebrities that were there, the legendary Mr. Tom Hanks was also at the Golden Globes, and he um, brought his whole family because he was nominated for, well, he won, well, you're given it, the, the Cecil B. DeMille Award, kind of like a lifetime achievement moment, so his, his wife, his kids came, and um, it, uh, one of his kids is the lovely Chet Hanks. Now, if you follow the shade room, you have seen this video, okay? Chet Hanks is one of Tom Hanks' kids, and um, he... Let's just say he doesn't live like the rest of the family. He prescribes to a certain lifestyle. Let's check out the clip, and then we'll discuss. Hit it. Oh, my God. Big up, big up the whole island massive. It's your boy Chetana coming straight from the Golden Globes, you know what I'm saying? Me, me, me father Tom Hanks presenting in a while. Tune forward, come. Big up, tune in. <laughs> oh. Hashtag justice for Chet Marley, okay? <laughs> now, listen. Something now. I am from the West, and my family's from the West Indies. I grew up in St. Lucia, and like I know in St. Lucia, there are like there are Asian people, and everyone speaks with a West Indian accent. But something about him being on the globe, on the red carpet, seems a bit opportunistic. Because I know when you're sitting at Thanksgiving, asking for the cranberry sauce, you want you're not speaking like that. You know what I'm saying? You're like. Mom, may I have the cranberry sauce, please? Like, that's what we're hearing. So I'm like, it's a little cringy to me. And, like, you know the internet was, like, not having it. People, it, okay, it's, like, 40% cringe, 40% question mark, 10% kind of hot. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, if he came up in the bedroom and gave me a little of that, I'm like, ah. You know, we, we would explore that, but it just seems so weird and so cringy. He also got in trouble in 2015 because as um, uh, um, a rapper and a singer, he feels like he should be able to say the N-word. Oh, oh, I know. So when I heard that news, I was like, oh, no, you know, no, we're done with that. But he did apologize, and he said, hey, um, I realize my, mis my, my missteps. I, sh I, I, I realize why I'm not, I should not be able to say the N-word. But after this, two days later, he dropped an original song on what platform you think? SoundCloud. SoundCloud. What in the cheap hell is that, girl? <laughs> like, everybody check out my SoundCloud. Like, not, at least I, I can drop, I drop my shit on iTunes. Your dad is Tom Hanks. You can put it on title. <laughs> so he dropped the music on SoundCloud, and whether this is appreciation or appropriation, I don't know. If you think this is appreciation, make some noise. <laughs> if you think this is appropriation, make some noise. Yeah. By the way, this is not a real image. Is that a real? <laughs> this is a doctored image, okay? This is fun. He did not, he did, he did not do that, okay? So, y'all, in, in the comments, yeah, we, we're, he did not do this. We made this up um, using our little paintbrush, okay? Application. It's not real. We thought it was funny. Um, but yeah, I, it is a little appropriation feeling. And yeah, so uh, whatever. Fuck him. Anyway, um, <laughs> but if you want to be a guest, you're welcome. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I saw this picture and I thought of another very famous celebrity. Not that they're closely related, but because this person has come into fire for, you know, for saying the N-word and things like that, the lovely Jeffree Star. Now, I know. Anytime I see, anytime someone comes into the meet and greet with a Jeffree Star sweater on, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> what you want, girl? Come for your autograph, Miss Thing. But Jeffree Star... He is a beauty mogul. He recently did that whole thing with Shane Dawson about the conspiracy palette, and, real, and we realized how rich Jeffree Star is. He just moved into like a $14 million mansion. He has a whole video on YouTube. You, you, have you seen the video, baby? Yeah. Well, what's your name? Christian. Christian. Everyone say, hey, Christian. Hey, Christian. Christian, where are you from? Queens. Queens. You look very young. Are you even old enough to be up in here? <laughs> 15? No, I'm 18. I'm 18. 
Oh, and, oh man. Oh, you shady too. Okay. <laughs> do, do, do you like Jeffree Star products? Oh, man. Ah! It's okay. Don't be no shit. Get him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Kick him out. No. So, Jeffree Star, this is his beau, Nate. Now, Jeffree um, and Nate, um, they have allegedly broken up. I know. Now, if you don't, here, here's the backstory about Nate. I got to tell y'all the tea. Okay. <laughs> okay. First of all, he's a very attractive man. Yes, we know that. Boom. So they've been dating ever since 2015. Nate, um, Jeffrey, this is before Jeffrey was really famous. You know, he had like a few things. He was not like a, he's not what he is now. He was not a famous multi-millionaire he is. He was just a guy on MySpace doing his thing. Jeffrey, um, Nate slid into Jeffrey's DMs like, hey, what's up? Let's get together. Cut to six years later, they've been dating. And Nate only dated women before he met Jeffrey. And he also still identifies as a straight man. You know, it's 2020, you live your life, like, you, you know, everyone paints and colors outside the box, but he identifies as a straight man, and Jeffrey is the only um, not uh, a cisgender woman that he's ever been with. Um, so there's that. And, um, and Nate, you know, if you watch the videos and stuff, it looks like he has a big part in the company, like he helps produce palettes and he's there with Jeffrey. It seems like a little more like emotional support human kind of situation, but still, he's at all the meetings, he's like in all the things. So Jeffrey had a big UK tour, um, uh, makeup tour where he was like going around to different cities and he canceled it like days before, no, just very abruptly. And this is where the kicker is. He went onto his Instagram bio and he used to have wife of Nathan. It's been deleted. Oh. I know. But I mean, if, if, if you watch the videos, it seems like they were genuinely in love and they just released this video of their new mansion like two weeks ago and they look madly in love. And honestly, let me tell you something. If you in a picture with your man and he holding you like this, that's love, okay? <laughs> if your man got his hand propped up on your booty, that's like, my baby love me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I genuinely thought that they were going to stand a test of time. But honestly, when you're a celebrity with all this shit, who knows like what you're... It, it, it's a tricky situation. I hope they last because they seem genuinely into the thing. And um, hopefully they do break up and Jeffrey can come talk about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, can you imagine we had Jeffree Star here, girl? <laughs> I'm gonna have to hire a real makeup artist like Bob to do my makeup or something, so I feel really glamorous, you know? But um, yeah. Um, this year, the queens of the galaxy are back on a mission to work the world. Get your tickets online now, but here's a little teaser to show you what's in store. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah! Woo! Next guest is a gorgeous Broadway darling who is known for Dear Evan Hansen and for his breakout film and TV roles in The Real O'Neills and Booksmart. Here to talk to us about season two of his podcast, The Two Princes, make some noise for Noah Gavin! <laughs> Noah! You, look so, you are giving me very, very... You, you live in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn. I know it, girl. Freshly, though. Fresh, how long? Two months. Really? Yeah, Where I was like LA? an Upper West Side baby, and then I was like LA, back to the Upper West Side, spent a little time in Midtown. Oh, ooh, that's that, that's that NBC money. Yeah. Uh, baby, yeah, girl, you all, huh? Are you single? Right now, yes. Work, good, good, good. And um, I love your, 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 this lovely orange. We're kind of matching each other a little bit. We're a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Also, can we just look at how big my hand compared to Noah's is. <laughs> that is the obscene, Noah. Thank you. Um, how are you? Are you enjoying this lovely? This is my favorite time of year. This is Drag Queen's favorite time of year because it's nice and cool outside. Do you like the cold? Yeah, just so everybody knows, in the studio right now, it is 10 below. <laughs> it's very cold in here. And Monet is sweating. Girl, because I am a drag queen, <laughs> honey, it takes a lot to look this motherfucking crap around. <laughs> Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Kate. This, this is our director, Kate. I love Kate so much. She thinks she's so nice here, y'all. Take care of me. Um, now, tell me about you You and Broadway. Now, I did not see you in Dear Evan Hansen. It's okay. <laughs> I was now, there a very short time. But you also just finished um, uh, 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 Waitress. Waitress, yes. And which I love. Wait, Waitress is, is a great musical. We love Waitress. It just closed on Sunday. Yeah. I the Waitress. I heard like all the, like Shoshana was there, Sarah Burrell was there. How was that? They all came out and I did not. Um, 
Girl. I cooked a meal for my friends instead. <laughs> Work. I mean, <laughs> we all grieve in our own ways. Yeah. Did you Did you enjoy your time at Waitress? I did very much so. Yeah. My th I I only spend three months at a time on Broadway. It's just stints for me stints, these yeah. days. Um, yeah. It was a blast. It's a musical that I fell in love with years ago when I was living in LA. I would listen to that song "Everything Changes" like as I was like pulling into my garage, uh -huh. and then it would like finish, and then I'd like sit, have a moment, and go into my home. And so then getting to like be in the show and getting to like. You know, sing along every night was just yeah. th th thrilling. Because you played Ogie. Ogie's like the little the, the little nerd character, which Todrick yeah. played right before you. I saw when Todrick was, was in it. Yes. And it's such a fun little role. You know, you're dancing, you're being like goofy, and where you, I, I can't tell if you were a nerd in high school. You don't. See, I feel like you were one of the cool kids. No, I was like a gay bully in high school. Oh my god. <laughs> Same. Um, uh, really? Yeah, very much so. I went to like a musical theater high school in. Same. I went to PPAS. You did? I went to professional performing arts high so school. So did I, motherfucker. No, you did not. Yes. When did you graduate? 2013. Oh, <laughs> you were so you were five years after me. Oh, so okay, you're great. twenty. You're twenty five. Yeah. Twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. I went, to, I went to. Wait, I had no idea. Um, hello, can't you tell? Honey? Did you have Greg Parenti? I had no. I didn't have. I had Mr. Sabat. Miss Mrs. Sabatino. Were you about to say Sabatino? Sabatino. Sabatino. Yeah. Sabatino honestly, she's is annoying. the reason Whatever. I graduate. She, she is the reason I graduated high school. She was. But she's also the reason that I got fired from cabaret that we were doing. The only show I've ever been fired from was PPAS's production of Cabaret. <laughs> I got cast as the MC. I was like doing a show on yes, the town. Welcome. Yes, I like and came yeah, in. About it. Everybody was mad that I was like out of town working and then just like swept in under the radar and like stole the MC from everybody. But, like, I'm sorry. And then I did it and was like not really showing up to Sue Sabatino's class and was only she's a humanities teacher and I yeah, was humanity. only showing up to my Rehearsal. Just to give people the idea, PBS is like no shade. I went there until I graduated. It is a all the shade. It is a all the shade. School, okay. Well, first of all, I didn't start. I didn't start class until like ten thirty in the morning. Yes. I would do humanities, which was like a, a mixture of English, history, and something else for like in two hours. Then I would go do vocal music. Right. And I was like, this. I am not. You were a vocal anything. major. Yeah, I was a vocal major. Mm. It, you were drama. I was musical theater. Music yes. theater. MT. 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 That was, was what they call it. Uh -huh. Which which I which was great training for the two princes. When did fiction? Okay, I feel like time is just going back because this, this we're is. We're back in the days of radio plays. Right, that it's very sad. Yeah. It's like. So we've talked about this. The idea of just the name fiction podcast. I yeah. think people are still trying to figure out the verbiage, the like, what it should be called. We were in the studio one day and they were like, you know, we're really struggling with like what we're going to call this thing. We don't know if it's like a scripted podcast, if it's right. a fiction podcast. And I was like, Y'all, it's a radio play. And everybody was like, <gasps> and they were like, we're not allowed to say radio. Right, not like, podcast. it's too like, yeah, yeah, it's like old school. It reminds people of like Dusty yeah. Dusty, War of the Worlds, whatever. So this, this, this is a very millennial looking room. Like, you, do you, have y'all heard about those old radio plays? Like, they were like basically act shows on the radio, and there was no TV back then in 1993. And, um, <laughs> And people would act out these scripts on the ra on, on the radio. Right, and yeah. it's like yeah, it's like a purely auditory, you know, experience. Which is which is basically like listening to like an audio book. So, exactly. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. How did you get into it? Were you was it something you wanted to do, or your agent was like, I think you'd be great for this thing? No, honestly, I I was just offered it, but it. Um, I have for years been in the audiobook world, and uh -huh. I've done like a lot of audiobooks. Which I hate reading, by the way. I only listen to audiobooks. Really? I fucking hate reading. Oh, I love it that. It is so annoying. I'm like, okay. oh, God. <laughs> Look me up on audible.com. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's like, you know, what's really cool about doing audiobooks is that you yourself get to sit in a booth and sort of like bring this world and this story and these characters to life, but in a podcast, much more like a play or a... TV show or a movie, you're sort of just coming in and playing your one role. Your and one it's, role. It's exciting because you get to really sink your teeth into that one character. And what is the story? I, I mean, this looks very, uh, very empty. <laughs> what is the story about these two lovely princes yes, over here? The two princes. So the this is the second season. The first season is sort of about these two kingdoms uh, who are at war, like coming together by way of the two princes falling right. in love. Shut Sh up! She gay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh my god, that should be your tagline, like like Tiffany Haddish. She ready, she gay. She gay. <laughs> yes, you, trademark that girl. That's gonna okay. be big. I'm telling you, Bitcoin. Deal. Uh -huh. Deal. Um, yeah, I'll cut you a check in a little bit. <laughs> um, and then the second season is sort of a continuation. The first season ends with a happily ever after, and then something we rarely get to really explore is the like 
the moment after, the happily ever after, and what becomes of these people, and what becomes of their relationship, and uh, what happens when, like, an evil witch comes in and like steps in and like wants to rock the boat a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a it's a beautiful thing. There's some LGBT representation. We oh, have wow. Cynthia Revo and Richard Kind. Ooh. Yeah, she's stacked. Oh, she's fierce. And I love gay. Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I have to say, the first time I think I've ever seen LGBT queer love in a cartoon was I'm a big um, Avatar. Um, the last Airbender fan. Yes, love. And and Avatar: Last Airbender. Cora, Cora, and oh, okay. Someone, someone is happy back there in the house. Um, Cora and Hasami have this. It's very ambiguous. They don't really call it that, but you they they allude to the fact that. So I like right. that you guys are like these are two princes. They're in love. And yeah. They, yeah. <clears throat> I think it's important for you know representation is important. I think more and more we're trying to normalize the. LGBTQIA experience at a younger and younger age, which Absolutely. I think is necessary. 100%. And so for a show like this, you're not watching two, you know, we're taking the idea of like a, a prince and a princess, a formula that everybody knows, a fairy tale happy ending with a man and a woman, a king and a queen, and we're sort of subverting it and making it about two princes. And I, I love think that. the children are clamoring. Yes! <laughs> also a beautiful prince of color. Yes, I love played that. by Ariel Statz, who won yeah. the Tony a couple years ago for Bands Visit. Yeah, I love that. Y'all, y'all, y'all are checking the boxes, girl. We're trying. Well, in the, in light of this game, I think that we in this game, in light of this story, we should play a game that we're calling <laughs> Which Prince? Can we apply the props, Kate? Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. It's it's kind of like a spin on like a. I have to write. Yeah, it's it's very easy. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna bring up two princes on screen, and you and I are gonna write which one we would rather. Have S with? S, yes. <laughs> Which one would you rather S? Girl, this is a nighttime show. Which one you want to bleep? You yeah. Know? So we're going to write and, you, and we're going to choose, OK? And okay. then we're, we're going to reveal together and then we'll, then we'll compare notes. OK, I love that. Because I feel like we would go after. We might have similar we might tastes. Have similar tastes. Well, we'll see. We'll find out. Where do we look? Um, this is going to come up on the screen. OK, okay. there's the first one. It's going to be. Oh. It's uh, Prince Charming from Cinderella and Prince Aegon from uh, Game of Thrones. That's Jon Snow. Yeah, Jon Snow. So write down which one you would rather. I'm gonna... I don't know, this is hard. <laughs> what is that, this girl? Well, they, too, they offer such different things. They do. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's, part of the, that's part of life. Okay. You wrote down, the, you wrote already? You have to write down who it is. Oh, but it's so long. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, God. I told you, I PPAS, girl. Oh, okay, I did it. I know, we did not really get an education. <laughs> but we can sing and dance. And make sure that you reveal it to this camera right here, camera two. We're going to do it together, OK? Mm -hmm. Here we go. One, two, three. Jon Snow! I said, who so spelled too. it right? Yeah. Who spelled it right? Oh, did I spell it wrong? I don't know. Oh. oh we spelled it. We, we spelled it. Oh, how you spell Wait, it? Wait, really? How do, you, how do you spell it? Like, J-E-A-N? Jean oh, you uh, J one, you spelled it right. You spelled it right. Because okay, here's my thing. John, the top one, he's a boy. I'm like, you probably got no exactly. hair anywhere. I, I want, I want that's a man that's a little rugged. Sex. You know Look what I mean? Look at his eyes. That's boring <laughs> sex. That there's darkness. There. Right. There's darkness. There's you know, like I, the mystery. You know what I'm saying? She's like get a little freaky. One, the top one, you know, he shows up to the party douched and ready to go. You right. know what I'm saying? Like ready. Right. Like no. Too clean. You can like smell the you know the cologne on. Exactly. Now. Okay. Next round. Next one. Ooh, okay, this is Chris Pine from Princess Diaries Ugh. and Prince Edward from Enchanted. Okay. Which he also played, a, didn't he play a Superman or something like that? That's James Marsden. James Marsden, so he's What did he play? Cyclops, yeah, X-Men? Cyclops, that's who it was. We love, we love. I'm gonna say... <laughs> I mean, to be honest, they're fucking twins, okay? <laughs> I know, I thought that was the same person. They're the same person, I'm kinda gagged. <laughs> okay, you ready? Okay, yeah. One, two, three. Kra. <laughs> What's enchanted? Who did you say? I yeah, said yeah, James, James Marsden, number two. James Marsden. We both said enchanted. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because let yeah, me tell you something. Talk. Let's talk. If you can handle um, the Phoenix, you can handle me. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that. Yeah. Oh, guess, honey. <laughs> 
I'm giving you all of that. All right? I want to go. You just... like, <laughs> eat that dick. Um, <laughs> okay, I, mean... I said, I would say, okay, I said James Marsden because, and I, okay, my mom has a yoga studio. It's called The Studio, right on the Bowery. Go oh. check it out. Are you a New Yorker? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. When did PPA? Oh, yeah, there we go. We said it. Um, <laughs> I say James Marsden because Chris Pine went to my mom's yoga class and she said he has bad form. And I know, <laughs> and I know James Marsden can dance because we've all seen it. He played Corny Collins and we all saw it. Oh, yeah, it. he's Corny Collins too, right. And if you can sing and dance, that's automatically points in my Honestly, book. Honestly, yeah, because he has good rhythm. She knows ain't how to no, move. Ain't know? nothing bad than a man with bad rhythm, okay? I'm like, can we get to the B? Exactly. Uh, you know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No form, bad form. Okay. Can't move. Okay, okay, okay. Next one. Next. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's Prince Akeem from <laughs> Prince from Akeem America. from Coming to America or and Prince. Prince. <laughs> huh. Aren't they making a sequel? Yeah, they are. I'm stoked. Book me. <laughs> Book me. <laughs> he should come on the show. That would be funny. I know. Okay. Okay. Wait, hold on. You 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 did that real fast. Yeah. Well. PPS. All right, here we I go. I know what I want. One, two, three. Wow. Oh, okay, let's discuss this. Okay, okay. number one, Prince Akeem. He has money. Okay. <laughs> he, uh, uh, he, you know, he's, he, he doesn't mind being humble for his woman. Sure. You know, like, yeah. I like those qualities in a man. Okay. Why Prince? I, wow, such disdain. There is such <laughs> judgment. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Why Prince? Um, I chose Prince. Because one time I saw him in person, and he's shorter than I am. No, he's not. Which is like hard, or was, RIP. Yeah. He's like, sh was shorter than I am. I just feel like I could, you know, like, take the reins in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> How short is Prince? Shorter than you? I mean, he's, he was maybe my height. Wow. I'm 5'5". Five five. Yeah, that wouldn't work, girl. That wouldn't work for me. I would be like, that, the, the, I'll be like the little plant from um, Little Shop of Horrors. Feed me! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, next one. Next. <laughs> oh, 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 I like this game. Okay. Okay. Mm. What is mm. that from? That's um, that's from um, what's the, what's that show? Oh, Prince of Persia. He did Prince of Persia. Remember that? That box office smash. <laughs> <laughs> Prince of Persia. He did that. That's what he did. That. Mm -hmm. So that's t that's that's T'Challa from um, uh, Black Panther and Jake Gyllenhaal, Prince of Persia. I know what I'm choosing. Yeah, but I know what I'm choosing too. This is not even a know. game, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You said Prince of Persia? Okay, let me explain. Please, please <laughs> explain. It is not even a Prince of Persia thing. It's a Jake Gyllenhaal thing. Ever okay. since Bubble Boy, I've been obsessed with fucking Jake Gyllenhaal. Bubble Boy? Yes, Bubble Boy, that old movie of his. Yes, yeah, so I remember where he's like a sickly like weirdo in the bubble. Exactly. You were like, mm, Exactly, because yes. I know that I'm going to make him fall in love with me. And when he, when he goes away, I'm going to get everything. You know what I'm saying? You got to yeah. plan for the future. There's nothing like a little agoraphobia to oh. get me going. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Have you chose Black Panther to T'Challa? Yeah, because he's sexy. Oh, but he's oh. Chadwick Boseman is so hot. But he's also a shorty. Jake Gyllenhaal is like 6'2". See, that's perfect for me. Yeah, you know? he's like, like 5'10". That. In heels, See, I would that's power good. over I him. Can't, I can't deal with somebody who's like so much taller than me. Right. Because then you, they, have, they, have, you have to like, they have to like pick you up to kiss you and shit. Exactly. Like, yeah. uh, every time. <laughs> but that's also okay. like dominating. Someone just like, you know. No, I'm into that. I like yeah, that. I'm 5'5". Oh five, 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 You're 5'5". Five, five. Yeah, how, you how tall do you think I am? With, without heels. Take a wild guess. 6'1". Close. I'm 5'11 without heels. Wow. Yeah. And with heels? With heels. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> Is Shrek tall? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I never thought about like, Shrek's height. Drag queens have layers. I can't even do it. Uh, actually, that was. That didn't it was work. good. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Make the noise for Noah Galvin. <laughs> You can listen to Noah Galvin as Prince Rupert in the Two Princes podcast now, wherever you get your podcasts. Woo! Oh, wait, I forgot this. Also, it sh there should be some celebration. <laughs> this is my fifth build.
You know what? I'll remember. <laughs> if we if we stoned this gun, I would remember. I swear to God. I just don't see it because. You would remember it if it was rhinestone? If it looked like this, if it I was would bedazzled. Never it. Yes, absolutely. Do you like your bedazzled cup? By I the love way? it very much. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Before we go, I'm giving out our tip of the week. This week's tip goes to Frank Ocean and Lizzo. Frank Ocean is the first openly gay man to headline Coachella, and Lizzo is the first woman ever to headline the Bonnaroo Festival without hair making her three and gays three. Amen? <laughs> First woman? Yeah, first Bonnaroo? woman. Bonnaroo. The Bonnaroo. Fuck? Uh -huh. That's all for this week. Tune in next time and remember to always keep your currency in check. <laughs> <Beep>. <laughs>